Coach, first off, welcome. It's great to have you here. Oh, it's great to be here. We very much look forward to it, and the people are great, and uh, couldn't be more, more pleased. A comfortable part of the country for you as well to be back in? It is. Uh, my wife, uh, Barb, and I uh, grew up in Kansas and uh, attended Kansas State and have great memories of uh, the battles with uh, OU and, and all the terrific players that have played at Oklahoma and, and the teams that they've had over the years. So I still think of it as kind of Big 8 uh, initially, but then uh, uh, just to the Big 12 part of it. Take us back to uh, Friday morning when I guess you woke up with no intention of leaving Las Vegas and the last 72 hours or so have been quite a whirlwind for you, but take us through that. It has been, but, but, but all good. Uh, Joe Castiglione uh, has been so good through it all and uh, I'm, I'm glad he was persistent. I'm, I'm glad he, uh, he stayed after it. Uh, uh, President Bourne it was, was great in, in meeting with him on, on Friday. and. And we're, we're leaving terrific, terrific people in Las Vegas and supporters of the program and, and leadership in President Smotrisk and uh, Athletic Director Jim Livengood, just outstanding people. And the more we talked here, we realized that also outstanding people and, and people that really cared about uh, the, the, the direction of the program and, and uh, uh, Oklahoma in general as, a, as its role in the state. So we uh, were excited to be a part of that. When you finally decided to take the job, that we're going to do this. What was the deciding factor for you? Don't know that there was a deciding factor. The more Barb and I talked about it, uh, uh, maybe maybe a little more than we realized at the time was you know getting back to the Midwest and, and the roots and, and an area that we're very comfortable with, very familiar with, as much as we've enjoyed other parts of the country and, and meeting people and, and, and moving around. Uh, uh, it, it seemed like home in, in a lot of ways, and, and we're delighted to be here. Um, you met the team last night. What were your first impressions? Very impressed, uh, really impressed. Uh, I'd heard about their, their attitude, their work ethic, uh, their desire to have a really good basketball team. Knowing uh, uh, you know, Coach Capel the way I do, I, I know they're gonna work hard and they're gonna be fundamentally sound and we're excited about that. And it's a young team last year and, and we hope to take advantage of their uh, maturing and, and their growth and, and I know they'll work hard to have a good team. How do you help a team through a transition phase like this? Time is, is the most important thing. You know, spending time, communicating, talking. Uh, you know, I'll listen more than I'll talk uh, to these guys. Uh, they've got a much better idea, having been here for a year or two or three, in, in terms of what uh, it's about and, and where they need to go. And, and we'll watch and react and, and hopefully help them uh, get where they want to be. I heard you talk about creating an atmosphere of winning. What goes into creating a positive atmosphere in a program? I think most importantly, uh, everyone being on the same page with what it is that we're after. If everyone knows that our, our goal is to compete at a really high level in the Big 12, a league that's got really, really good teams and really good players, then everyone understands we've got to work hard. There's not any shortcut to it. Uh, so once you understand that, uh, then work backward, then you know you've got to spend time. You got to get there early. You got you got to stay late. You got to invest time. There aren't any shortcuts. Uh, and really, in college athletics, that's maybe as good a lesson as anyone can learn for application to the real world, because there aren't any people out there that are doing great things that are taking shortcuts. It's about investing time and and and, and putting in, uh, you know, in a way that allows you to get from the experience what you want. You know what fans do as soon as they hear uh, the new coach has been named, they go, look, how many points a game does this team average? What kind of style of play can we expect? What style of play can fans expect from Lon Kruger teams? We'll always adjust to our people. I think most importantly, we, we put our guys in a position on the court where they have the best chance to be effective. That being said, we'll try to recruit players that allow us to, to push the ball offensively and attack in transition, hopefully have some balance of inside, outside. Uh, man will be the base uh, operation defensively, but we'll adjust and and uh, and uh, mix in some zone as we need to trap a little bit, try to create offense from defense, but uh, most importantly, play a way that allows our players the best chance. But we want to attack on both ends and and and, and hopefully dictate on both ends of the floor. How do you think nationally, or how did you evaluate the University of Oklahoma basketball program? before you arrived? What's the perception nationally? Look, having been at Kansas State since the early 70s, uh, been much a follower of the Big 8 and Big 12, and anyone that's out there understands that Oklahoma's got a terrific basketball tradition. They've had outstanding players, outstanding teams, uh, outstanding coaches. Uh, you know, as recent, uh, you know, just uh, the last decade, they've been to a Final Four. 
they've been the NCAA's, uh, you know, many, many times in the last 30 years. They, they, they're in the postseason almost all the time. Uh, Billy Tubbs teams, you know, set a benchmark for really outstanding teams, and and uh, his teams, you know, whipped up on us uh, a lot during the late 80s there when we were at Kansas State, and and uh, and, and played a way that really dictated to, to the opponent, and uh, they were really good, and and uh, and Billy did a great job. I thought it was fun and appropriate that your welcoming press conference was here at the McCaslin Field House. You're familiar with this venue. Uh, tell us about the uh, glory days. Uh, the, the glory days uh, were for, for Scott Martin and Bobby Jack uh, as it related to Kansas State and in my experiences because we came in here as sophomores. Freshmen couldn't play back then. And, and uh, I remember watching uh, Scott Martin as another guard uh, when I was younger and how good of a player he was. And then playing against him when he was a senior, I was a sophomore, and, and he taught me a whole bunch on both ends of the floor. He and Bobby Jack were in that class. And, and uh, just as I'm thinking, okay, now they're gone, I'm, I'm okay. And then Mike McCurdy comes in and, and kind of continues the same trend. But, uh, uh, you know, really always had great experiences playing against Oklahoma. Really respected their players and, and uh, how tough they were. I've asked five or six different people, some coaches, to evaluate you as a coach. What's your strength? And I've got five or six different answers. It seems like that you're good at a lot of things. What would you evaluate is your greatest strength as a coach? <laughs> Don't really stop to think about that very much. Uh, the thing we're, we're hoping to do is, is, again, work with our players so they have the best chance to, to be playing their best basketball come March. You know, end of the season, uh, make consistent progress from early in the season right through to be playing best basketball late in the conference season and on into postseason. So if we can do that, I think that, that may vary a bit from year to year in terms of what you have to do to accomplish that. Maybe a younger team is one thing. Uh, maybe, I guess, in response to your question, might be the versatility, how flexible we are. We don't have a, a, an only way to do it. Uh, we listen to our players a lot in terms of watching them play and identifying you know, who can do what and trying to help them uh, also identify uh, what they're good at and, and try to put them in a position where they can do that consistently on the court. In evaluating your previous college stops, the thing in common is that each at the time you took over was experiencing some sort of a down cycle and quickly you were able to turn it around. Uh, what's the key to turning a program around and what's the first step that you take here at Oklahoma? Uh, that's simple in, in that you have to have good players. Uh, it, it, we've never turned one around without having good players. Uh, it, it comes down to, to recruiting good players, people that want to be there, people that want to represent well, people that take pride in the, the program and in the team. It's really a, a team first attitude that we're looking for. Uh, people are going to represent really well, not only on the court, but off the court, around town, in the community. Uh, and at every stop when we've had success, it, it's, it's correlated to having good players. And, and we, we like the core that we've got right here. You know, they, they want to do well. They, they, I know they'll work hard. And we're excited about uh, going forward with them. You've talked about embracing the past, embracing the former players and coaches. Why is that important? And how do you start with that? It's huge because the former players are what Oklahoma basketball is all about. And any time we can get them back and any time we can get them to continue uh, their participation. Uh, we want that. We want them to come back, uh, talk to the players, come to practice, attend games, uh, help us in any way they possibly can because the more the players learn from past players how much it still means to them, uh, the better for our players because uh, you know, they, they need to be accountable to know that they're representing all those players that have gone before them, not only the fans and the, the students currently, but everyone, the alumni and the, and the players that have gone before really care. And, and the more our players today understand the significance of what they're doing and how much it means to a lot of other people, then perhaps they'll work a little harder yet. You mentioned igniting the fan base and that the first step is the students, the importance of the students. How do you see it? There, there's not a crowd in the country that's great that doesn't have great cornerstone of student participation. And, and that's where it starts. You know, we'll do whatever we can. I met several students today that were fantastic. And, and whatever we can do to get out and, and get with their organizations and, and encourage them to come to practice. If they've got ideas about practice or maybe a first look, uh, first day of practice in October or, or game night. I know Joe uh, Castiglione, he's, he's open to whatever. Um, you know, we're, we're interested in, in whatever we can do to get, get them involved. It, it's a part of their college experience, too. We want them during their time here to take something that they can have memory of for the rest of their lives. You know, whether that be a, a late game, uh, uh, you know, win, 
celebration on the court or following a team through postseason, whatever it is, you know, that's part of, of memories that those students will have for a lifetime. I was talking to Sonny Galloway today, and of course we're aware that you were a two-sport star at Kansas State. He was anxious to get you over with the baseball team, see if you could help them out. I think maybe you're throwing out the first pitch tomorrow night from what I heard. So. Um, is there any chance we could get you over working with the uh, the baseball team a little? Not that they need your help this they, year. I was They're say, doing just fine. There, there's no one, there's we'd love to see you take some grounders as well. There's a little chance of, of it, and, and, and they don't need it. You know, yeah. That's a, that's a, a pretty clear uh, uh, formula for not being over there to help them out. Uh, but look forward to watching. Yeah, I love baseball. Really, growing up, that was my first love. Uh, no question. I thought I'd play baseball forever, and, and uh, that didn't happen. And uh, yet... Uh, Really look forward to watching their teams play. Final question for you. Fans are hungry for a winner. They won it yesterday. So what, what is your message to the fan base of the Sooners? Let's go. Let's, let's get after it. Uh, yeah, we want it just like they want it. Uh, you know, we're going to work hard. We need them to work hard. We want them to be a part of it all. Anything we can do to help them uh, be more encouraged to participate and get involved, uh, we're open to that. Uh, it, really, it really has to be about sharing the ownership of the program. I am honored to be here as the head coach, but that's just a really small role when you think about the big picture. Uh, we need everyone in involved. Uh, and again, it's the students, it's the band, cheer, dance, uh, it's the former players, it's the alumni, it's, it's, it's all the great people in the department. Uh, uh, I know uh, President Bourne and, and uh, Joe Castiglione and, and others administratively are very genuine in their efforts to get this going in a, in a big way and, and have a good time doing it. Coach, we're excited to have you here. Welcome to the University of Oklahoma. Thank you. My pleasure.